When you think of the old Disney movies, what titles come to mind? Cinderella, The Jungle Book, 101 Dalmatians? See, all these films share something in common. They all came out of Disney's Silver Age. The Silver Age lasted from 1950 to 1967 and marked Disney's return to big-budget animated features. The studio made far smaller films during World War II, and Disney came back to doing what they did best – animated films that adapted fairy tales. The movies of this era were as colorful and magical as the golden age that the company had started with. They ranged in subject matter from princesses to Dalmatians. The same can even be said for their receptions, because some became classics, some were panned, and a few were both. However, there's one big question. Which of these movies is the best, and which ones aren't as worth going back to? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Binge, and this is the Disney Silver Age, worst to best. We'll start off with the worst entries, then work our way up to the best. With that out of the way, let's begin. In the spot for the worst entry, we have The Sword and the Stone. Released in 1963, the film adapts the T.H. White novel of the same name and follows the early days of King Arthur. In this movie, we follow him as a kid who's educated by the wizard Merlin. Merlin teaches him not only about the world, but also about how he's destined to become a great hero. As the last Disney movie to be released before Walt Disney's passing, Sword in the Stone is a fine movie. It isn't bad, but it doesn't compare to some of the others in this era. The story is bland by Disney standards, and the structure of the plot doesn't help. Almost half of the movie is just Merlin and Arthur turning into animals in an attempt to teach Arthur something. Then hijinks ensue, and by the third time you want to hit the fast forward button. There isn't much to this film that we could classify as exciting, making it one of the duller films to come out of the Silver Age. I mean, this is the legend of King Arthur we're talking about. You'd expect this film to have a large and epic scope, but it doesn't live up to that. We also feel this as one of the weaker character cast of this era. While Merlin and Madame Mim are fun, Arthur is one of the least compelling heroes to grace a Disney movie. He never feels likable, and he's not one you're gonna root for. It's hard to get attached to him, partly because he has three different voice actors. Imagine how confusing this video would be if we kept swapping the voices. Despite the issues, there is still enough to keep this movie from being a total mess. Like we mentioned before, Merlin and the Mad Madam Mem are the highlights of this movie. While we've seen better versions of the mentor and the villain in other Disney movies, these characters are enjoyable. We also say the highlight of the movie is the duel between the two. The scene is fast-paced and lively, in a way few other moments are in this film. They go all out in this scene, with Merlin going as far as turning himself into a germ that Mim is infected by. That's pretty creative. Besides these two characters and this scene, there isn't much here that you couldn't get better from the other films on this list. Want a goofy version of the Arthurian legend? Check out Monty Python instead. Look, you stupid bastard, you've got no arms left! Next is 1951's Alice in Wonderland. Based on the Lewis Carroll book, the movie follows a British girl named Alice down a rabbit hole. She winds up in Wonderland and meets an assortment of colorful characters, from the maniacal Mad Hatter to the raging Queen of Hearts. That's really all you need to know with this movie. Alice in Wonderland has a lot of good going on, but some elements keep it from being among the greats. Still, this movie is a blast. It's bursting with color and energy, in a way few Disney movies could ever match. The cast of characters is equally as colorful and memorable. If you were ever asked to describe what a certain character from the book looked like, like the Cheshire Cat for example, you would immediately picture the Disney animated version before any else. This movie has definitely left its mark on the original novel in a way few other adaptations have. With the positives out of the way, let's move on to the negatives. Alice is another protagonist who is weak, but she's not as bland as Arthur. But we still don't get that much character development, especially once we enter Wonderland. She has some interesting moments, like when she begins to fear she is forever lost. However, the movie seems more interested in Wonderland than her. It feels like the intent was for Alice to merely be a POV character, someone we can project onto in this wacky world. The movie's plot may also be a point of contention, because in short, there isn't much of a plot. It's only Alice wandering from location to location and meeting various characters. You're not going to get an amazing storyline or character arc, which might put off some viewers. With such a low emphasis on story and characters, we couldn't rank it any higher. But if that doesn't bother you, this is one to check out, especially if you prefer your Disney movies to be on the trippier side. Whatever you do though, please. Do not watch the live-action remake. Next is 1955's Lady and the Tramp. 
Based on a Cosmopolitan magazine story, of all things, the movie follows a pampered cocker spaniel named Lady and the stray mutt Tramp. The two form an unlikely pair, and a romance sparks. Upon its initial release, Lady and the Tramp was a box office hit, but a critical disappointment. Many critics felt the film was too sappy and alienated the child audience, but time has been on the movie's side. Nowadays, it's widely considered to be among the studio's best films. What do we think? Well, we think Lady and the Tramp is a classic. While it isn't our favorite Silver Age film, it's hard not to enjoy. The movie has an adult edge that makes it one of the more interesting Disney movies. It's not to the point that it's unwatchable for kids. In fact, it's refreshing to see a Disney movie of this period cater to older viewers. The romance between Lady and Tramp feels organic, even though they're canines. If this were live action and the dogs swapped for humans, it wouldn't feel out of place. The movie's patient and lets the romance blossom at a natural pace. At no point does this movie feel like it's rushing anything. The animation is also stellar. The movie was the first animated feature to be made using CinemaScope, giving it that widescreen aspect ratio we are so accustomed to seeing in modern animated movies. It provides the film with a scope and sense of scale, unlike anything the studio has made prior. The colors go a long way in giving the film that scale as well. Every scene feels as if you can jump into it at any time, something that you cannot say about earlier Disney movies. This movie is not perfect. The two dogs that often follow the story, Jock and Trusty, aren't all that interesting. They have some fun moments in the story, but you're usually left wanting the film to get back to the main plot whenever they appear. This is definitely not the movie to watch if you hate the sound of dogs whining. But if you can get past that, this is an enjoyable entry in the Disney canon, and a classic that absolutely holds up. Starting off the top five, we have 1967's The Jungle Book. Based on Rudyard Kipling's book of the same name, the movie follows the adventures of Mowgli, a child who is raised in the jungle by wolves. Mowgli encounters all sorts of characters during this adventure, from the lovable Baloo to the evil Shere Khan. The Jungle Book is one of our favorites from this era, and for several reasons. For one, it features one of the best cast for any of these movies. All these characters are fun and lively. If you just see a photo of them, you'll most likely begin to hear their voice. Mowgli is a good protagonist, but the supporting cast members are the real highlights. Baloo is carefree. The relationship between him and Mowgli feels real. Even with Baloo being, you know, a bear, Shere Khan is an intimidating villain. We love how the movie sets him up as his character with a threatening presence. A major part of the movie is Bakira trying to get Mowgli away from the jungle in preparation for his arrival. This lets the audience know this villain is a threat before we ever see him in action. The orangutan King Louis is another fun addition. He was one of the best musical numbers for any Silver Age movie. The music is great, and we'd go as far as to say that it has the catchiest songs of any Disney movie to come out of this era. The animation is also really good. The scene where Baloo has to tell Mowgli he can't live in the jungle has great character animation. The animation details doing just as much lifting as the vocal performances in the emotional department. This movie made a snake, an animal not particularly known for being well animated, lively and expressive. How can we not give it props? The main reason we rank Jungle Book so high is because of its role in the Disney canon. This was the last film to be produced by Walt Disney, and the first released after his passing in 1966. It's very likely that if this film didn't hit all the right notes, the Disney that we know today wouldn't have existed. This movie proved that there was more to Disney than just its namesake. There was a whole team of talented artists who were more than capable of continuing the studio's legacy, setting into motion the next 50 years of Disney. In fourth place, we have 101 Dalmatians. Released in 1961, the movie adapts the Dottie Smith novel of the same name. The story involves the two Dalmatians, Pongo and Perdita. After the two fall in love, they become the parents of a litter of Dalmatian puppies. The vile Corella de Vil becomes obsessed with the puppies, wanting to use their fur for her coats. The puppies are captured, and it's up to Pongo and Perdita to rescue them. 101 Dalmatians is a blast. There is never a dull moment, and it's entertaining from start to finish. One thing we love is the animation style. It's more stylized than prior films, with the characters having this blocky, geometric look. It's a refreshing changeup, and we can see why this look informed many of the later films in this era. The character animation itself is great, and it feels more fluid than many of the Silver Age movies. Roger, the owner of Pongo, has some highly fluid movements that may take you by surprise. Besides the character animation, the backgrounds are also lovely. They're full of interesting color palettes, as well as just being well-crafted. 
However, great animation only goes so far if it doesn't have an equally compelling story. In the case of 101 Dalmatians, the characters are fun and lovable. Pongo and Perdita are good protagonists, and we like how the film takes time to build their relationship. This movie easily could have started with them already being a couple with puppies. Instead, they devote time to making you believe their romance. You quickly grow attached to them, and you find yourself wanting them to save the puppies as the movie goes on. Cruella is also a great antagonist. After all, she is a character who wants puppies for the sole purpose of making a fur coat. That alone makes her one of the nastier Disney villains, but she also doesn't disappoint in sheer ruthlessness. She owns the screen whenever she appears, and you can't help but focus on her. No wonder she ended up being the star of a live-action movie. With an exciting story, beautiful animation, and wonderful characters, 101 Dalmatians holds up as one of the best Silver Age films and a delight for all ages. Earning the bronze medal, we have 1953's Peter Pan. An adaptation of a stage play, the movie follows a trio of youngsters in England, Wendy, John, and Michael. They've grown up hearing the tales of Peter Pan, and on one fateful night, he comes to their home. He takes them to an adventure in Neverland, where they meet the Lost Boys and face off against the dreadful Captain Hook. Peter Pan is definitely not a perfect film. There are things in this movie and other movies on this list that have not aged well at all. Despite this, we still feel Peter Pan is one of the strongest films in the whole Silver Age catalog. As an adventure fantasy movie, it excels in giving the audience a sense of adventure and wonder. It might sound a tad cliche, but the film will make you feel like a kid again. You know, like playing pretend in your room without a care in the world. Besides the sense of fun that flows from the story and world, we enjoy the characters. Wendy and the other kids are good protagonists, and they are another good example of POV characters. We get to witness the wonder of Neverland in the same way they do, and it makes us a lot closer to them as characters. Peter Pan is a fun protagonist, and he works well as a guide to this fantastical world. He's also got a lot of attitude for a Disney hero, making him a refreshing change of pace from other protagonists. Tinkerbell is a charming sidekick, and she leads to some of the funnier moments in the movie. However, they all pale in comparison to the villain, Captain Hook. Like Cruella de Vil, Hook owns the film throughout his scenes, and you never tire of seeing him. He may actually be the first truly great Disney villain. The ones in prior movies weren't bad, but this is probably the first time Disney made a movie with a villain who was just as interesting. That is, if not more interesting than the hero. Peter Pan is a swashbuckling adventure movie to the core, and once it gets going, the movie never really stops. It has all the thrills and fun you'd expect from a Disney ride, and that's why it gets into the top three. Earning the silver medal is 1950's Cinderella. Based on the fairy tale, it follows Cinderella, who lives with her evil stepmother and stepsisters. Cinderella is essentially the servant to her family. However, things begin to change when the king invites all eligible maidens to a royal ball in the hopes of finding a wife for the prince. This sets in motion the events that will lead to Cinderella dancing with the prince and falling in love with him. Cinderella is near the top of this list for a number of reasons. For one, we love the characters. Cinderella is likable, and one you want to see win. She's a character who dreams of greatness, but she's held back by the world around her. In her case, it's her abusive family. It's a feeling that many can relate to in their own unique ways. So many of us have great aspirations but can be held back by the circumstances we exist in. The mice are fun bits of comic relief, although it is shocking to see how much of the movie revolves around them running from the cat. The animation is great, with the backgrounds especially looking beautiful. The scenes with the prince and Cinderella dancing are probably the movie's highlights, giving the audience a full scope of their surroundings. We also rate the movie high because of its legacy. Cinderella is one of the most recognized Disney movies of all time. In the vein of movies like Snow White or The Lion King, Cinderella is so ingrained in pop culture that you know pieces of this movie even if you haven't seen it before. It has stood the test of time and became one of the studio's most beloved films even 70 years later. We must also take into account its impact on the studio at the time. Before this film, the Walt Disney Animation Studio was in a rut. Early films like Fantasia and Pinocchio were financial bombs, and World War II left the studio unable to make films like those during the war. This was their first movie after the war ended, and a lot was riding on this film. The studio was millions of dollars into debt and facing possible bankruptcy. Cinderella had to be a smash hit, and thankfully, it was just that. If this movie hadn't turned out the way it did, Disney wouldn't exist today, and this video would be a lot shorter. With such a huge impact on the company and its status as a Disney classic, how could it not get this spot on the list? It's more than I ever hoped for.
For first place, we give it to 1959's Sleeping Beauty. Another fairy tale adaptation, Sleeping Beauty follows Aurora, the child of the king and queen. After her birth, dozens come to pay tribute to the family, but one fairy is not invited to the occasion. That is Maleficent, who curses the princess in retaliation. Three fairies are able to weaken the curse, and they take Aurora away to live with them until her 16th birthday. Aurora grows up unaware of the curse and falls in love with Prince Philip. Aurora eventually succumbs to the curse, and Philip must awaken her and defeat Maleficent in an epic battle. Sleeping Beauty is a delight to watch. It feels like the culmination of everything we have covered in prior movies. It has everything you would want in a Disney animated movie of this era. There's a great fairy tale story, compelling characters, breathtaking animation, and a unique identity. Sleeping Beauty might actually be the most unique Disney film on this list, since this was Walt Disney's big attempt to make an animated feature for a more adult audience. The attempt failed causing Walt Disney to distance himself from the animated department for the rest of his life. Despite its initial failure with audiences, Sleeping Beauty has endured. It's now considered every bit as classic as something like Cinderella, and it's even part of the National Film Registry. The film has a gorgeous art style that has never been recreated in later Disney films. This extends to the designs of the worlds and characters. Even the minor characters, like the guards on the royal throne, have a striking look to them. You've got an enjoyable range of characters, from the naive Aurora to the despicable Maleficent. This might be the first Disney fairy tale film to have a believable romance between the princess and the prince. While it isn't as complex as those seen in later films, there is development to their relationship. Maleficent steals the show, though. Oh dear, what an awkward situation. You can feel her presence in every scene, and she's dangerous. She turns into a dragon and curses a baby for not being invited to a celebration. How could you not love the drama? There's a great sense of tension in this film, and it's relatively fast-paced. It's quite different in that regard to other Silver Age films, which seem so much slower by comparison. It has everything you want in a Disney film, whether the heart, romance, comedy, action, or adventure. It combines everything you'd want in these films and manages to make its own identity in the process. And that's why it's our number one. All right, that's the list. Let us know in the comment section. Which is the worst and best Silver Age Disney film in your opinion? And tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.